Okay, are we going to start over? No. D yeah, you can start over on that story, but should we start the whole thing? Because I, I feel like yeah. you're going to get into something good. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. <laughs> Lonesome Report. I'm Jim Mundorf from Southwest Iowa, and I'm here with Shad Sullivan from... The headwaters of Bitter Creek, Archer County, North Texas. I'm never going to remember that, and you're always going to shoot in there. <laughs> We're not choreographing this. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the people sometimes they they call you my guest um, because I think there's still some kind of like confusion on how I'm doing things. So I have a podcast where I have guests on, um, but this is a weekly thing where me and Shad, Shad is my compadre. Um, <laughs> more than a guest because he contributes on the website and he's written stuff for me. And, and so it's just kind of us who, who pay attention kind of to what's going on. And, and we come on here once a week and talk about what's in the news. And this yeah, week, this it's, lonesome oh, report. Yeah. This is the report from the lonesome lands. Um, if that makes sense. It does. But this week, I felt like there's really pretty much one thing in the news. And this is our last one before the official election. I feel like next week will probably be, uh, well, who knows? Who knows what it'll be next week? But <laughs> it's scary to think about. But, um, but yeah, so really the only thing, and I know everybody's sick of hearing about it, but it's really also the only thing anybody's talking about, which is the election. So we were going to kind of just go over that and kind of break down where we're at and, and what's been going on. Um, because really, I don't think anybody's that much interested in anything else. <laughs> so you were telling me, and Chad was just telling me a story about Colorado. What's going on there? Yeah. Okay. So back in 2021, uh, we had a county clerk, uh, be federally charged with election fraud, fraud in Mesa County, Colorado. And, Although she did do some things wrong, uh, she she really was innocent of the charges they had brought against her, and it was just election fraud. And um, and of course, she was a big Trump supporter. Well, they had her trial. I don't know last month or a couple months ago, and they sentenced her to nine years in the federal penitentiary for election fraud. Okay. So then yesterday it comes out in Colorado, our Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, has known for months that there was a security breach in our election process in Colorado in which um, all of these passwords, for, uh, state agency passwords, into the uh, election system process were published on the Secretary of State's um, website under a different tab. So whether people knew about that or not, it was there and it was exposed. And of course the GOP exposed it. And so she has had to play roughshod in the last 24 hours about that. And our, our County, um, our County clerks who handle their local elections had no idea about it until yesterday. So she is, Jenna Griswold, Secretary of State of Colorado, is running rampant this morning trying to cover her tracks. They've known about it for months. Uh, they had a federal agency come in and try to try to fix it and oversee it, and but it just come out. So that's a big scandal in Colorado because she is the one that brought charges against um, Mrs. Peters. In what did they, they convict her of? The, the lady that got sent to the... I can't tell you the exact, but it was election, the elect, the exact charges, but it was election. What did they say she was doing? Password interference. But how, what, how, like she was, she was getting into the system somehow or something? Like she, hacking she, the system? There was no, that there was passwords to get into the system published. Oh, and that I, she leaked it. So yes. it, it goes back to the same thing. Exactly. So how did they convict her though? They just had to. George Soros judge. Oh yeah. Totally Where's Mesa liberal. County? What town? Mesa County is Grand Junction. Oh, far on the West side. And of course, I mean, of yeah, course that's a long way from the liberal hotbeds. Right? Well, kind of. There's I mean, the whole state. In, <laughs> well, it's up in the high country and well, it's on the very West side yeah. of Colorado uh, on the Utah border. And it's a huge, I mean, Grand Junction's a big town. So it's likely a liberal 
you know, hotbed. And um, yeah, T uh, her name was Tina Peters and they brought uh, charges against her and her son died in action. And um, so that was a big deal. And, you know, I've talked to some local state politicians about it, my, my state representative about it, in fact, and he said she did not do everything right. But the circumstance in which she was charged with federal crime um, was unwarranted. So it's a big yeah. deal. And now T and now Secretary of State Griswold, who hates conservatives, she is a commie. She well, yeah. appointed by like she's, she's appointed, right? No, that's a we voted. We vote okay, you vote. Yeah, I'm showing and, how dumb uh, I am, I guess. On <laughs> well, I every mean, once in a while, every every state's different, right? Oh, okay. Um, and um, so I I texted my representative this morning. I'm like, what happens here? They she either needs to resign or they need. To, he said we can't fire. We got to recall her. And he said I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. But um, it just shows you how forked tongue the left is. I mean, and she's known about this for months and months, and it just he just let all the all the clerks of the court or clerks, county clerks know about it yesterday. Yeah. And so that it affected every single county in the state except one. That's kind a, of a microcosm of all this stuff that's already starting now. And you're going to totally. be hearing about it. And so I, what, what I would say is don't believe any of it until, I mean, there's so much stuff coming out of Pennsylvania, all this weird stuff. going oh, on. The cops well, are standing outside of a polling place, telling people they have to leave. Like, Exactly. I don't know. And that's what's so weird about, you know, the internet's great because we get all this information, but it's also kind of like you don't know what to believe or who's telling the truth or or why exactly. I don't know. It's just well, weird. Well, I saw that deal in Pennsylvania where they, you know, they could vote till 430 and there were people in a yeah. long line, but at 130 they closed it down. Well, I don't know <laughs> if that's legal. But and the cop also, was quoted. He's saying it's a, this grueling process. Like, what is he I talking know. about? No joke. Standing in line is a slow and grueling process. If they want to do it, let them do. It. They well, want to stand in well, what about the people with the mega hats on? Is that is that le illegal? I mean, that's a freedom of speech issue. It's not. Yeah, like and if it doesn't have, if it doesn't say the, I wouldn't vote for Trump. It. Right. You know, insane. You have a. Where do you vote at? In. Uh... I vote in Colorado. Oh. So you got a little tiny precinct, right? I've never... Actually, there was one year where I had to wait in line because we were still picking corn, which we usually are, which harvest is done now. So that's why it's not dark out while we're doing this. Um, But yeah, so so I had to go early in the morning just to make sure I voted back in the day. But um, yeah, pretty much now it takes me... I mean, I've never waited more than five minutes. Besides that one time I had to go very first thing in the morning before the place even opened, there was a line around the block. I think that was well, Trump's first, Trump's first, uh, had been 16. But besides that, I mean, I had one, they keep changing where I vote. And one of them, we have this little community building that's like a Quonset. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. cool. And I was always like, I don't vote there anymore, but I was like, oh, I should get a picture of that. I bet people would think that's No, that's the, way it is. that's the way it is in Crowley County, Colorado. The only people waiting are the, are oh, the yeah. voting clerks. They're waiting on yeah. people to come vote. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're sitting there and talking every time. Yeah. Walk in there. They love to see you, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome with open arms. That's right. Um, I guess that's how it is in rural America. But So that will bring us into... I wanted to get into kind of how rural America is being portrayed a little bit how or has been in the election. And I guess really mainly by, by one side, if you haven't noticed, we're, we're probably a little biased on here, but um, so this most recent ad, I think, I feel like we should go to this most recent ad and then go backwards because this one, the one yesterday, did you watch it? I sent it to you. Yes. Yeah. And where the guy's, like the woman goes into the voting place and it's obviously like a rural America, middle America. They're trying to portray and the husband's like, get in there and do your duty, lady. Yeah, that, you know, I mean, that's, that's pretty much how they're American you get in there and vote the right way, woman. And, I mean, that's how they're portraying it. <laughs> it and is. Then, and then and it's Julia Roberts voice over, which I didn't even recognize until they, they I read the description or whatever of it. But. It is just unbelievable. And that is how they see. I mean, they're just kind of showing their hand as how they see 
rural America and how demeaning kind of to the women that, that live out here. Like your husbands are overlord, you know? Yeah. That's, <laughs> I mean, and that's exactly just... what they think of us, Jim. I mean, I and, know it. it. And to be honest with you, I don't know one woman like that. I don't know, you know, like I, of course, all of the women I know are strong, you know, right. independent women. No and it BS takes a strong, kind. independent woman to be in rural America. I mean, they're the leaders. They're the true leaders. And yeah. they're, I don't know one woman who would listen to her husband and say, OK, I'll vote for who you tell me to vote for. But they were really just bashing on the white independent man right there. Yeah, and it was. It was. I mean, they're that. also bashing on the females like, like, oh, you're supposed to be this, you know. Yeah do yeah. what you're told housewife and this is how the housewives are and they have to sneak around to do what they want to do yeah you know that's just, really the message there if, if you're it is. if you're married to a conservative man you have to sneak around because yeah. it's the only the, the, the one line in it was like it's you still have one place where you can choose you know you ha, you can have your own choice or something and it's just so toned up, like i mean it's very to me it is too. insane that because they're so like it goes the other way that ad has to i mean it just shows how bad that and how disconnected yeah, that whole campaign is is a perfect example kind of of it and yeah. actually you, you, when you talk about it i could see you know i don't think anybody's like keeping secrets or i'm i mean i suppose it happens but i'm sure there's plenty of wives i know i actually know some that are wives that are pissed you know there's families that that it's hard on <laughs> you know that they don't agree on on who to vote for and i'm sure there's husbands going in there like i'm not telling you know <laughs> don't you think it could go the other way too oh yeah it could go the other way i mean but i mean because there's know, wives that are have they have the derangement syndrome you know i don't know any women like that i literally don't know any women like that and it's not that i don't i do know families that are split politically right but it doesn't rule their lives oh yeah you know? I'm not saying that they would like the husband has to keep it a secret or anything. I'm yeah. just saying he's probably getting browbeat because of how he's voting <laughs> uh, because they've turned it into this single. That That's the other thing about I wanted to get into. So that brings you into, well, the one thing Kamala Harris has said about rural America, like she's quoted saying it's, it's in a conversation. There's a video and I will put these links. I know I say I put links and sometimes I don't, I'll put the links to that to that commercial that we just talked about. But then there's also a video of her saying she's asked she's being asked about voter ID. And she said, well, we can't have voter ID because um, some people aren't able to make photocopies of their driver's license. I, and I'm assuming she's talking about mail in voting. And she's saying how some people in rural America don't have access to Kinko's or copy machines, so they can't make. She says some rural Americans don't <laughs> can't make copies, and it's like, and that's how she sees us. Like I don't think she's ever. I don't know. It's just mind blowing. But it's also like they get stuck in this voter ID, you know, where they're just tripping all over themselves because. When you say that it's race, like their their line is it's racist to to want voter ID. Well, that's a racist thing to say because exactly. what you're saying is that certain races can't figure out how to get an ID. Okay, well let's talk about let's go back to take this back for a step, and and what your point to Kamala Harris and, and rural America is totally true, but it shows the disconnect between the common man and the political elite because you had. A couple months ago, the mayor of New York came out and said, these people in the Bronx don't know what computers are. I mean, and and so you had all these memes with these Bronx natives of Bron the Bronx, New York, and they were making all these yeah. videos about not knowing how to run a computer. I mean, this is how disconnected the political elite are from the people. And that's why Trump right now is, uh, you know, he surrounded himself with very common people. You know, J.D. Vance is a very common man and anti you know obviously anti-establishment but that is just a it's just a an example of how disconnected they are from their voter from their voter uh pool yeah and also the other thing that came out recently and i don't know how this has not been a video from the get-go is her talking about with the stroke of my pen with the stroke of my pen i can put mm -hmm. you in jail yep. this is when she was a da in california 
Yep. And she put people in jail because their kids weren't going to school enough for truancy. Like they were missing well, too yeah. many days of school. No, yeah, you're exactly And she's right. talking about how I can destroy your life if your kid's not. And it was like, I mean, it's straight out. Like it's Wicked Witch of the West vibes. Like she's well, cackling with a stroke of my pen. I can put you in prison. You'll lose your job. I'll ruin your life. And then I'll drop the charges. No, she said I, like that's pretty much yes you know word for word what she says how has that not been part of, a huge part of the campaign but it also shows you know how does there's no way she wouldn't want a primary with videos out like that and stuff like th this is the reason why they went this route they wanted her to be the candidate they had to leave old joe in there as long as possible to make her the candidate because she would have never won a primary and and so this is like a, like i've always said i'm sure you know I don't know how many Democrats listen to this, but I actually feel, I mean, they're the ones who are the biggest losers because this is their candidate. Yeah, I mean, they they had, <laughs> I mean, no say in, they had no say in the political process, which is why they're always talking about a democracy, because the democracy is a mob rule instead of talking about the, uh, a republic. But did you see that um, there was a gal by the name of Bevelyn, B-E-V, Bevelyn Beatty. Same last name as my son's first name, Bevelyn Beatty. And she is a black conservative um, who fought fights against the abortion issue. She, you know, she goes to these abortion clinics, she prays. And do you know that uh, Kamala Harris prosecuted her and put her in prison? She went to prison this week for praying in front of just praying on the street in front of an abortion clinic. Uh, and they charged her with federal crimes for uh um uh, getting in the way of of illegal business or something yeah. like you know and but that and, and so at the same time we have that side talking about how Donald Trump is going to use the military against the American people and that he is a fascist yet it, their actions are actually Marxist in nature that is totally Hitler-esque in nature to just you know go arrest somebody who's, whose kids aren't going to school. I guess that little girl had been sick for months and months and months. Then they prosecuted her mother. And then this Bevel and Beatty free speech, and they're prosecuting these people. I would, you know, it can go anywhere. They can come get us for this. Yeah, and that's just, it, we talked about on the last one, they signed that thing that said they can uh, use military force against you, military yeah. citizens on military so soil yep. or on U.S. soil. Yep. It's and then they come out and say that Trump's Hitler. Um, and, and part of that, what do you think about the Hitler stuff? I almost feel like, for one, I don't know, I'm torn because I, I like, are they flailing or are they just setting up? Because you know, the it's whole set. saying is, well, if you if you get your followers to believe that he's Hitler, well, they'll do anything to stop him, right? Because you morally, you should do anything you could to stop the Holocaust, right? This but, sounds this sounds so dumb coming from me. So I apologize. But when we were in junior high, do you remember the, the kids, they'd say, whoever smelt it, dealt it. Well, that's exactly what <laughs> the position we're in is that those that people perfect. are actually guilty of what they're accusing us of. I'm in a personal relationship with somebody that like that, always uh, just totally guilty. Not nobody in my family, but always guilty of what they accuse others of. And I'm like, yeah. Gosh, this is so crazy. It's so crazy. Oh. Yeah. Whoever smelt it, dealt it. <laughs> I they're smelling smell. it and they're dealing. I think, honestly, I you have a really good point there in that are they flailing or are they setting themselves up to do exactly what they're talking about? That's yeah. mine. Mean, and why would they pass that right before? Why would they exactly. sign that into law right before the election? Exactly. That's some wild stuff. And that's not it's a conspiracy scary. theory. No, it's happening. That's like just a, you can read the document and, yep. you know, it's out there. Maybe I'll yep. try to put that link up. But um, yeah, I so know, that, Jim, it's, it's very strange times because, you know, between November 5th and January 20th, holy cow, there's a lot of time for a lot of stuff to happen. Yeah, I know. That's the other thing. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about a lame duck session. What is going to happen there? Because he just said um, he's going to open up JFK files as soon as he's in there. I mean, you know there's people that just cannot allow that. I, I don't know. It's Did you watch the Rogan thing? I haven't watched Him it. Him on Joe Rogan? 
It's pretty good. I mean, and, and it really gives you an, you, know, you can't sit. That's the other thing about her going on there. They're talking about, she only wants to do an hour and all this kind of stuff. And that's the thing. You can't sit down for three hours and fake, fake who you are and fake what you are. And he is, I mean, he is who he is. And he's kind of, he's kind of an odd cat when you, when you get to listening to him. But that's one thing about him is he, uh, I mean, he is who he is and, and he puts it all out there. Yeah. Um, it was it's interesting to really listen to it. I was in the tractor, so I was able to just sit there for for three hours mostly and and listen to it. Yeah, but I haven't had a chance to get to it yet, just because it's three and a half hours long. And yeah, it's not the one thing is he's funny. Like there's a he tells a story. My favorite part about he's telling this story about these pilots, and he keeps talking about how good looking they are. <laughs> he's like these guys look that they were. It, like Tom Cruise, only taller. He's like, and he's like, he goes one time. He's like, and then he just keeps. He keep, then he tell the story a little bit, and he's like, I'm telling you, these guys, they would make a movie about them, but no one would believe it because they're so good looking. <laughs> <laughs> he just kept going back to it, and it's just like he's a funny, like he tells these stories, and and they're kind of funny. Like if you hate his guts, and if you don't hate his guts, and you can listen to him, he's definitely entertaining. It was entertaining, well, I, no matter what. I just saw a s small snippet of where he told Rogan, he says, you can't vote for her. She won't. You, you're yeah. not the person to vote for her. I know you're not voting for her. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. They never really got into it because he had a tweet about Rogan because Rogan said he wouldn't endorse Trump. And that's where that comes yeah. from, I think. And But they never really got it. But And then tw Trump tweeted about Rogan's a pathetic... He needs to be booed, and he was he got mean, which I think he knows he does that. And he, there was one interview where he was like, "Yeah, I regret some of the things I tweet, but you know, it, it just shows he's human, kind of." Who of us doesn't, right? Right. Yeah, he has these kind of knee jerk reactions, and I mean, it is what it is. We yeah. got two candidates, one to pick from, or to pick from, and so. And I guess that goes into the other thing I want to talk about if we're talking about like a rural America, how they view rural Americans. And this one was weird. And we talked about, like I, I said before, we did it. We, me and Shad did an episode. It was like 10 o'clock at night. It never saw the light of day because I never got to it. We were in the middle of harvest. Um, I tried, but, and then it kind of got outdated and now it's passed. And, but anyway, on that episode, we talked a little bit about the man enough commercial. <laughs> which this will be in the link, but they made, I th I don't think it was the Kamala campaign, but um, if you haven't seen it, somebody affiliated or some pack or something made this commercial that is the most, it, it seems like a Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah, it's the most cringy thing ever, but it's also, it's so weird because it's like, you got you can't be serious. It can't be serious. And what it is, is these guys kind of portrayed to be, um, mill America, men. like men, yeah, masculine men. Masculine men. But it's it's so fake that it's obvious. <laughs> like they took the article. I'll put a link to the article where it describes kind of where they found these guys. They took these guys straight out of like theater class, which they if you th picture a guy from theater class, although one of them's like four hundred pounds, and uh, and they dressed them up at what they thought rural America looked like, and they made them say things that what they thought masculine rural american men would say which are the <laughs> stupidest stuff like one of them says i'm man enough to to cook my steak raw or rare <laughs> or stuff it's been actually i should have went back and watched it before you we gotta got, post but... that link on that deal because it here's my question to you is that truly what they think masculinity is and that's I almost heard... but that's the trick it's like because some of the stuff they say they know it, it is stupid and they got to know that it's stupid but then they go back to you know the biker guy almost seemed you know his the way they looked the other thing is how stereotypical was it to make the black guy uh the athlete <laughs> i didn't say it um but yeah and then they had the hispanic looking guy he was like in a vegetable garden and the four hundred pound guy with this retard, uh, with this <laughs> very strange looking hat, and portraying. Well, they a it's like they went down to Tractor Supply and got some stuff, and then they stood, stood stood this one guy next to a horse, and he talked. He was talking about something about his horse, but 
like you go back to see that and it's like when when you see a guy standing by a horse who's never touched a horse or been on a horse you can just tell like you can yep. just look at him and tell and yep. that guy has never messed with a horse before in his life <laughs> he was just kind of standing there by my horse here you know like <laughs> it was so and then none of them have like they all have their shirts unbuttoned for some reason they must think that rural people don't button their shirts well the 400 pound guy i kind of get that but like they had like plaid shirts on and none of them are buttoned. And then they stuck a hat on this guy. He's 400 pounds. And then they, when they zoom out, it's like, you know how them big people, they looks like their shoes are about to explode. Like his, his shoes are about to pop. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, and then he goes, I eat carburetor. So that's the thing. He goes, yeah, I, I eat carburetors for breakfast. And it's like, what? Like you got a, guy out in a vegetable garden wearing a felt cowboy hat that you just picked up you know and they're they're all just you know one of them needs to just rub some dirt on him they're all just looks like brand new clothes straight out the box and he says i eat carburetors which you gotta think he you know there's the obvious joke of he eats carbs constantly well, he got jim, car he's got his carbs mixed up <laughs> well jim i mean honestly it's so uh, corny and cringy yeah. that I thought it was a joke at first. I mean, I, it almost I, seems really, like a joke, but it's not yeah. a joke. And the other thing is the whole, the whole idea of the commercial is man enough. I'm man enough to vote for a woman right. and right. I'm man enough to support a woman's reproductive. Like the whole thing, all this stuff we're talking about. Well, I mean, this Kamala ad that just came out, it seems like they really want to turn this into a one issue abortion oh, totally. you know they don't want it and then that's the other thing they don't say the word and i don't want to get into you know an abortion discussion but i mean no but that is the issue that they are running on standing yeah on. i mean even in that in that commercial with the man and the two women you were we were just talking about that was the issue there you know right yeah and it's kind of like i don't know Where's the guess, policy? That's my question. Where's the policy? We've yeah. yet to hear any kind of good policy, uh, domestic or foreign, from from her. And I'm just like, that's a telltale sign right now that there is no policy and that somebody else is running the show. That's very dangerous position we're in. Well, yeah. That, who's running the show right now? Exactly. That goes back to the question of, well, it, I guess you said, um, I can't remember if that was on here or not, but something about the garbage we we he. Biden, what do you think about that? Biden calling Trump supporters garbage? I take it as a personal compliment because I'd rather be <laughs> That's garbage. What, all, everybody's all bent out of shape. I'm like, uh, who cares? I mean, yeah, I, I like, I don't really, like, they obviously think that. Is this breaking news that he thinks yeah, that exactly. his and supporters are garbage? What, uh, what did Hillary Clinton call us? Uh, the deplorable. The deplorables. And I'm like, heck yeah, I'm deplorable. <laughs> Doesn't bother yeah. me a bit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What'd you think? And then, so then some people are bent out of shape about the Puerto Rican deal. What'd you, did you see any of that? The no, guy making the jokes? Apparently not. He said, well, at Madison, you didn't even hear about that. I felt like that was the biggest thing. Oh, on. oh, oh, yes, I did. I just, yes, I saw it last night. He said about Puerto Rico was a said Puerto Rico was a big pile of trash. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, the only thing I saw about it was I seen him say that. And then I saw a Puerto Rican woman come out and say, he wasn't calling the Puerto Ricans trash. He was calling the uh, the island itself and its government trash. And she said, it is just a big old pile of trash. And the government <laughs> there is a big old pile of trash. She said, that is the truth. The Puerto Rican people are good people. And so that's really all I saw about it. But, I mean, he shouldn't have said that anyway. Yeah, that's the, that's the main takeaway, I feel like, is... And that's the thing about Trump and the whole campaign and everything. Sometimes they do such stupid things. Like well, that guy just, made his living making those jokes. Like he jokes about races and he, and so then you bring him out on this. And I feel like Trump, like he's coming off that Rogan interview has the wind at his back. Really? He fills up Madison square garden plus 70,000 people outside. And then right. the whole headline is this jackass, you know, making these jokes, which who really, you know, who cares? Because don't be offended by everything. But, in the end, like you're giving them what they want, kind of like they want I, to not I, talk about policy. They want to talk about some Puerto Rican joke, um, yeah. which he also made fun of Jewish people. And I mean, every, um, he made jokes about everybody, which 
you know, whatever. They should, well, they should. Now it's not the time for all that. Right. Yeah. Not and I get point. it. Have a comedian on to. I agree. But I mean, not that one. That I mean, the guy makes his living of, on these you know, roast deals. And then they showed yeah. his Tom Brady roast where he he said that one guy's, uh, I don't know, I shouldn't say it because it's about Jewish people. Is there very many Jewish people in, uh, so that's the other thing. Do you know any Jewish people? Not a single well, I one? I don't know. I suppose I do. but I Yeah, mean, that's the other thing. And I've always thought about that you. since a kid. Like, how can you be racist against people you don't even... I mean, I know. of religion, which I get it is, it isn't just, you know, you're, it is kind of, it's a, an ethnicity, but it's well, also there was based an old on ranch, religion. There was an old rancher north of us and he, and they, everybody always called him a Jew and I guess he was Jewish. And, and I, I always asked my mom, I'm like, what does that mean? And she says, yeah, it's just a different religion. I said, is it bad? And she's like, no. And so it was never an issue. Yeah. It was not an issue at our house. We never even talked about it. We knew Jesus. Yeah, was and that's true, the, you know, right, yeah, you got the same God, really. So, um, and that's yeah, yeah, that's the thing too. It's funny how you, when things in the world don't make sense, you you think back on your childhood, kind of, because it's kind of like as a kid, you you realize that things don't make sense. Like hating Jewish people, I don't get it. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Well, I mean and like you learn true. about the Holocaust, like, well, how could you really tell? And well, they had to, you know, back then, I guess there was these communities and stuff, but, um, yeah, but yeah I mean, it's funny that, how, I guess we were just too busy working, trying to make a living and not get in the, the drama fray of all this racism and all this. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just wasn't an issue at our house. Do you know what they should have done? Uh, talking about those comedians, because, one time I got XM satellite radio in my pickup and, and man, there are some really, really bad. And they, I guess they're funny, but they're really inappropriate comics out there, but there are some freaking good ones. And one of them that I've discovered in the last couple of years is a woman from Tennessee named Leanne Morgan, who I actually met at, at, at the airport in New York city earlier this year. And everything she does is so dang funny. And she's a conservative and, um, they need to have people like that. And, you know, you don't even have to joke about politics. Just joke about the regular things. I don't know why we have to be so crude and rude and use all them horrible words. And people think that's funny. Well, to me, it shows you where the heart, the hearts of people are, right? Is that their, yeah. their hearts are a little bit dark. And I, I just don't like that. So. Yeah. And I don't, th that's the thing about the guy just going as hard as he can on everybody. And th the main thing is, at a political rally, like it just seems so stupid. Not the time or place. But, yeah, but the other thing is, like, I always feel like, like Dave Chappelle became huge when I was in college, and like he helped. I felt like he helped race relations a ton because he was constantly joking about. And he was joking about it. different see, cultures, yeah. like how different cultures. And he makes it funny it, because right. I have seen him joke about. The uh, white church and black church, and it's oh, all yeah. true. It's all hilarious yeah. true. And the white people are sitting in the same aisle as the black people, and they're all laughing at the same stuff. I mean, yeah, it's That's hilarious. The thing that about the comedy, it makes it. But the, yeah, then you get into. I don't. I don't know that the uh, calling <laughs> calling out all, every single race you can and just making fun of them is a, the greatest thing either. Well, there's but, a difference between vulgarity and funny. Yeah. Right? Which yeah. Dave Chappelle can be pretty pretty vulgar. Yeah, but... I don't watch him that much, but I and that's the other him. thing about you know, just a different culture, I guess. Yeah. But, what else you got? Well, I was just thinking about what are you, I mean? This is our last lonesome report and conversation before the election. What is going to happen with the election? From what I see, Trump is just. To me, my my body feels like it, he's just gaining momentum. But if you watch the uh, mainstream media polls, he's still behind by one or two points. And so what is the real, where are we really at, Jim? I don't I think we're going to be having the same conversation on next Wednesday. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where are we at? I don't think we'll have anything figured out. But like, what's weird to me, and they talk about, you know, what's going on in Pennsylvania, all this stuff. The thing is, if 
I don't think if he's got the momentum that it feels like he has, because like I always always talk about being a purple state, like you never know which way, and or it's 50-50, but I don't think they're really talking about that now. So, you know, Iowa is usually like a 51-49, and, 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 it, and there's a number of states like that, but if those states are all, you know, 60-40, and then you have Michigan where Harris squeaks it out, like, that's to me oh, yeah. like going to be the telltale sign of of what's going on but i don't know i mean i have i, still, I have no idea i would never i would never place a bet on what's going to happen here i know right week. but i think I, they're I, all out of bullets i don't think we're going to see any surprises you know like they talk well, about yeah i i saw a deal where they said uh they thought california was going to go red again yeah. and yeah I don't, right I don't think that'll ever happen. Uh, <laughs> they don't they go back to voter ID. You get in, tr- they'll be mad at you if you pull your ID out. At, at, like there was some <laughs> deal where they passed, like you're, it's, you cannot pull your ID out at a polling place in California. So that's what's, that's I don't what's know. pretty wild. We'll see what, we'll see what happens. You know, I just hope it's, it's safe and there's nothing, you know, this, they've already, well, I saw on TikTok where they had started some fires and some polling boxes, oh, yeah. thousands of, of uh, ballots in them. And then last night there was a very, um, I think this was in maybe Washington, but yeah. there was a very high level um, Democratic worker um, operative that they caught on video camera sabotaging a box full of ballots. And I'm like, I need them. Yeah, like they, they know ID'd. who it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They ID'd him and arrested him, and I don't know who it was, but like an Antifa probably person or something. I don't know. They um, just big, big Democrat. Uh, but there, that just goes to show. Like, if you mailed in your ballot and then you watch that, <laughs> that mailbox burning, like they were pulling all the mailbox. Like it just goes to show mail mail in voting is so stupid. There's only one. There's only a couple groups that should be able to do it. Military overseas. Or overseas citizens, like if you're if you're a citizen of the U.S., you should be able to mail in your ballot. But that's the thing when you have these gigantic boxes of mail-in ballots, in so the middle easy, of nowhere, so easy just to go in and light the whole thing on fire. And then what do you do? I know. I suppose they go in and well, there's no ID, so they've they, got to they've got to alert the the people that if you put your yeah. uh, ballot in here, we you know, and then then who's to say some of those people don't come yeah. up and lie? Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Used to say the demo, you know, the, the parties don't go to that county and are like, okay, everybody, have you sent in your ballot? It don't matter. It don't matter what you've done. Just go vote again. Well, I think this is a good place to really say, um, I appreciate rural America for sure because, yeah. uh, because it's more controlled and it's more, um, you know, less, it's less confusing for the people. Right, and so it's not we're, grueling and strenuous. It's like not the grueling. It's not grueling. Exactly. <laughs> the cops are telling people. Exactly. That was but, wild. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I, I'm honestly, I'm not, I'm not excited. I, I'm not ambivalent. I'm. There is a, a feeling in me that ha- is positive about it, but I'm not losing any sleep about this at all. I'm, I'm just not going to, it is what it is. And um, until it's over, then you'll be, well, I, what I say is if all this stuff comes to fruition, it doesn't matter if it's Trump or Kamala Harris, the people have to take their country back. I mean, if Trump is a fascist and Harris is a Marxist, we have to, the people have to come together and take their country back no matter what. Yeah. And, um, but Trump, that's the other thing about calling him Hitler and fascist. Like he's been president for four years. No joke. Like we kind of have he, a track record. It, well, um, it, he does have a track record. I mean, yeah, and he never prosecuted his opponents. <laughs> no, and he could have, and he yeah, could have. He could have. Like he told Hillary, he could, he could have, and he should have. Um, but you know, I, I don't care. Hey, this is what I told somebody the other day. I don't care who you vote for as long as it's Trump. But that's <laughs> not re- that's not how I actually feel. I just want everybody to go vote. Yeah. As long as you're voting the right way. <laughs> no, is there ahead. a little is there a little bit of you that, that wants to see the whole thing collapse? <laughs> like the election, like 
Is there just a little bit of you? I think there is for a lot of people. Like they just want to see the whole system explode. I, you know, like that meme where it's like, where do you see yourself in six months? And then it shows Mel Gibson in the Patriot and he's hiding behind the tree with the mut with the his musket. I don't there's a lot of people who think that, that they want to see that, but I don't think they really do. But there's almost kind well, of like, never what would that be like? What's that? Well, they've never been through the suffering. They've never yeah, been I through know. the suffering. And the thing that that will bring is suffering to a lot of people. Now, yeah. the people of rural America, can probably they're probably more prepared for it than anything. But I don't want to see a system collapse, but I do want to see a huge change in the system. I think that we need to prosecute those who are, are treasonous and um, uh, are seditionists. And I, I think that we have to get back to a moral ground here. And yeah, but I don't think, take- I don't think like prosecute, like who, well, who are you talking about? We need to prosecute. Like, did you see that lady screaming at the little kid at the rally? Like she's screaming. That in was the- awful. It was awful. And then, but I mean, she's just a deranged person. And I, you know, I almost feel bad for those people because, but then one guy's like, we need to find this lady and press charges. Well, for one, is it well, illegal she, she to scream? At little illegal. Kids? Yeah. No, I, I mean, you she, can't she go from illegal. one side. Like the, I feel like the press and charges thing is getting out of control and we can't turn into these people who are like, well, we won. Let's start pressing charges. Like, how about we all just Jim, chill I'll out? These, well, these people, Antifa that burn cities down. Yeah. Those people should be in prison. Like that's These the people thing. that are. It, well, and we have a candidate for president that wanted to bail him out of jail. That's what I'm talking about. That's <laughs> that he is to me. That is treasonous. People who are who are giving our enemies yeah. leverage against us that's treasonous yeah These like george issues. soros throw him in prison exactly sure I'm, who's come I'm, in and tried to put all these judges in that have no respect for the constitution or the law or anything else exactly. but exactly we can't just turn on our fellow man because they've lost their stinking minds and screaming at a little kid the other thing is don't take your kids to one of them deals well i was wondering the same thing why did and, and there was know, good that, people in that crowd there was one lady that told that you know, that there's people you can't that girl's face. Right. Yeah, she's what is wrong with you? Right. But was that guy a conservative or do you know? I thought it must have been there? because I think there was like uh he had to be. Because why would that lady why start screaming? Yeah, I th- I think there was probably like protests or demonstrations of like people outside holding Trump signs and stuff. Well, I give him as much credit as I give the gal who screamed at his daughter because he's yeah, like you want to take your kid to that deal, yeah, and exactly. into a into a fight, like exactly stupid. That's exactly. Um, I guess there is one other thing that's kind of been as far as agriculture because RFK Jr. and I think he had a new video come out today where he's going to be in charge of. He said Trump's promised him oversight of FDA. USDA was in that list of things. I hope so. And it is scaring the pants off. Did you see that tweet? There was a tweet. This is just kind of coming to mind. Um, Kevin Fulta. He's like a chemist or or scientist, and has he's he's been a big, uh, you know, he's he really pushes. He doesn't push GMO. He's like a a defender of genetically modified um, crops and and Roundup Ready stuff, and all this stuff, and he's like, if RFK gets in there, it's just going to decimate rural America. Um, Which I could see he has a point, but it's also like he's been, the people who've been number one cheerleading for these corporations for so long, you know, I feel like, should we, you know, how much say should they even have? Um, And I can remember that guy promoting... Uh, plant-based meat or lab bait or lab meat or something because he's a scientist and he believes in the science and seems like his the other thing he's he put something about is the number one goal like these preservatives that we use and there's nothing harmful in any of the stuff any of our food and any of this stuff and it's kind of like i feel like agriculture even if you are a big proponent of gmos and glyphosate and all that kind of stuff number one um thing that you should be focused on is consumer health like, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> um, well, let me because make because it looks really bad when you have tweets like what he put out. Like the number one thing is shelf life and and you know different things like that. Like it's like you you talked about before. Um, it's just quantity, quantity, quantity is what these corporations have pushed. And over the years, what we've done is we've lost a ton of farmers, and it's real easy to that's it. It's real easy to look at your neighbor down the road and think, you know, that ain't going to be me. But, you know, and that's probably what he thought 10 years ago. Well, listen, I, I'm not saying there isn't going to be growing growing pains with the change. There's going to be growing pains with the change and there's going to be opposition to the change. But let's let's go back and look at all this stuff. And he talks about will decimate rural America. We are on the way to decimating rural rural America already. We're losing, you know, just since 2020, 17,000 independent producers a year. Uh, 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 these these corporate oligarchs have uh, ru uh, decimated rural America. They have hollowed us out. The food system, if we add two and two up. Hey, when I was a kid, you didn't see these morbidly obese people with these legs as big around as as telephone poles. With their uh, shoes all, about to explode. And that is <laughs> all about, that's got to be diet, that there's something in it. Years ago, I had, this hasn't been many years ago, but I had a good friend uh, get killed in a tractor accident. And um, the coroner comes out and does all this stuff. And then just in a conversation with my mom, uh, the, my mom's talking, we're talking about all these things that had happened that day. And the, the coroner says to my mom, she says, do you know, and I don't know if this is scientific, this is just what the coroner said. Do you know, it now takes three days for a body to start de to decompose 72 hours for a body to start to decompose. Now, what does that tell you? That tells you there's some sort of preservative in that, in that, yeah, like what we've, and they, exactly. that's what goes back to, like, they say 70% of diets, 70% of the average diet is ultra processed, which yeah. I don't know what the definition of that is, but it sounds, but to go back to the farming deal, it reminds me of, uh, of the D-Day speech, like before the guys were going to land on, like the farmers going broke. It reminds me of that because one of the commanders before D-Day said he was in front of this group of guys and he was like, uh, Two of two of every, what did he say? Two of every three of you is going to die on that beach over there. Mm -hmm. And the guys sitting there looked at the guy on each side of them and thought, poor bastards, you know, because it's not going to be him. So he's the one, you know, everybody in that room thought they were the one that's going to survive. And so that, that kind of when, when farmers who have, you know, have been doing good farmers and ranchers who've done all right, you know, cattle prices are up and everything seems good right now but you you hear these statistics about in the past five years four hundred and fifty thousand small farms and ranches have have went under and it, it's not always just um have to do with commodity prices you know it's got to do with land prices got to do with inheritance it's got to do with all the that whole, stuff it's the whole yeah system. the system yeah so when i was a when i was a uh freshman in college up in Wyoming, I had a, a economics professor, ag economics professor, tell us, and I'll never forget this. He said, this is in 1992, he says, if your family is in business today, it is likely that you'll be in business forever. And I thought at that time, of course, I was young and impressionable, and I was like, forever is a long time. That gives me that gives me hope for the future, right? Mm -hmm. But as I became, as I got out of college and got my real education, I look back on that comment and I'm like, he couldn't have been more wrong. He could not have been more wrong. And I don't know if it was because he didn't see the system that was in play at the time, or that he didn't have the experience. But there was not a bigger statement, be, uh, a more wrong statement, because now it is. You know, back in those days in the '80s, it would take, and the '80s were bad. Uh, I went through the 80s, but it would take two to three years for your operation to go, you know, totally from in trouble right. to foreclosure. And now one year, one year, that's how much we put up and is at stake now. Um, it's a whole different ball game, And that's just he couldn't have been further from further uh, wrong, wrong more, you know. Right. Usually the stupidest comments come from college professors <laughs> come straight out of universities. <laughs>
I, I've got, I had a couple of really great college professors, but yep. um, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, you're, you're exactly right. And it's because of the hands-on experience. And, you know, I, somebody told me one time, uh, <clears throat> you either, uh, you either do or you teach. I've heard that a million times. Yeah, and I know. And my I'm wife's not, a school teacher, not, so I cannot condone that comment. But she teaches reading, so I'm pretty sure she no, knows. No, no, I'm talking about on the <laughs> on the university level. Oh yeah, and for sure I'm on the university level. The, I've I'm said not, it for years. The dumb, some of the dumbest people I've ever met were my college professors, and I'm, I'm not, not kidding. We had a religions I'm, of the world teacher who. And she had all these accolades, won awards, and had all this stuff printed. Yeah. And kids would ask her questions in class, and she would have the blankest look on her face. Like, she just couldn't comprehend things. It was it was kind of that, – that was where you really learn about stuff no, and people. You're you know? right. I didn't – listen, I went through all of these ag courses in my college days, and I, and I learned stuff, stuff, but my dad is the guy who taught me – about futures and I took collegiate futures and options. I, my dad taught me about futures and options. My dad taught me about, you know, I I'll never forget. Uh, and of course a lot of people wouldn't agree with me, but I had this animal science professor say, well, if your water's on this side of the ranch and you, you got to put your salt on the other side. And my dad, my dad, from he, he was not an educated man. He's like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He says, you put the salt of the water because the water helps them, you know, utilize nutrients and essentials and helps them gain weight. And, and, and so it, I guess everybody's different, but my best experiences come from the school of hard knocks. Yeah. Cause he can say, well, they, here's, you know, you're talking about learning the market it's like here's how i lost my ass this year here's how i lost my ass this, that year you know that's probably how he taught you right it sure is and yeah. on his, <laughs> and those on are his, the best lessons i mean and on his deathbed i'll uh, never forget it because he went through the 80s oh my gosh my mom and dad went through hell in the 80s and uh, on his we uh, when he was dying i'd take him out and sit on the porch in the afternoon we'd talk a lot and uh that's where the sit in the dark cold and hungry um came from but he said i said dad what you know I, i'm trying to learn all this stuff as fast as i can because we knew he, he, his time was short and i said uh what do i what do i need to do and he goes boy you you just remember this um don't ever depend on the land he said i saw a time when i couldn't sell the land and he said every single year will be a different year and he has been totally right i have not had a consistent year um in terms of production since since he died i mean since i took over so yeah. it's um and that's the thing know. with agriculture too i mean right now we corn's below four dollars and i can remember two years ago at harvest time it was i'm pretty sure it was over seven so and that's the other thing like people don't really realize like the product you have to sell can drop close to 50 you know 40 percent in well look what happened in 2019 with the yeah. whole we lost 40 yeah. 40 40 dollars a hundred over the weekend on uh, inequity on our cattle i mean it is a it, it can be over it can, you can lose everything overnight it can all be a different game tomorrow yeah i don't forget it all right man we did pretty good, good. conversation i hope i hope that was good to halloween tomorrow what are you dressing up as is tomorrow Halloween? Yeah. Oh, my wife told me, she said, uh, if you want to do the trick or treat and you can do it, I, we can't afford to buy candy. And I'm like, okay, then let's <laughs> keep the lights off. <laughs> so we're, I guess I'm sure my son will you go. can't afford to buy candy. Have you seen how high candy is? I don't eat candy. I we, told well, you. Well, we don't either really, but we, um, Oh my God. We, we got our, our property tax bills in the mail yesterday and we're like at ah, we we can't buy nothing now <laughs> we gotta start saving oh <laughs> so what's anyway. your costume i don't have a costume you don't go to the halloween parties or i do not participate in anything halloween i usually sit on my recliner in the dark uh, and the kids are not well my wife loves to do that but um and she will tomorrow night. I know her, but, um, I'm just, you know, it's just one after another, after another people come and we do live in town. And so, uh, we get a lot of visitors and it's just overwhelming for me. Yeah. I don't live. We but don't, the little kids love it. 
we're out on a dead end road here next to the cemetery. Sometimes I think people go into the cemetery on Halloween for fun, but my wife's dream is yeah. always for us to be done with harvest so that I'm around for trick or treat and then I can help drag them around. And, and this year, and it's go, it's going to be happening this earliest year, ever. I can remember, I think one other year, which was, I think it was maybe last year. And then the year before it was actually, we were pretty close to almost done with Halloween. And I think we just took, took a night off early because my nephew, he's got little kids too, but, um, but yeah, usually we're middle of November. We're still picking corn and this is a week before Halloween. We're already done. So, so that's it for us. Um, make sure you go to lonesomelands.com, click subscribe, and that will help. There's a number of different options on there where you can help out and help keep us, keep us doing this thing. And, um, also we got a merch page. You can go buy your Christmas presents, um, on Lonesome Lands, uh, store and share it, share the video. If you like what we're doing, um, main thing to keep us going is views and, and let us know, let us know you're watching it. So share the video, like, subscribe, rate, review, blah, 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 all that stuff. Hit, click, and share. Hit click and share. Hit, click and share. Is that your... Yeah deal or what's that that's what everybody in social media says like on tiktok they say hit click and share oh see i'm not on tiktok i need maybe oh, you should yeah. run my tiktok maybe lonesome lands need a tiktok you could be my tiktok influencer you got to get on tiktok bro well i i can't keep up with the instagram and the, all Doesn't the other matter. stuff you gotta get on tiktok you gotta oh. keep up well okay you're hip to the time so yeah, I got to go do some plumbing. Oh. I, I kind of feel like a dork in my own skin, so why would I dress up as something else?